skincare empties. Our most frequently repurchased products. We've actually never done a video on this before. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. Welcome back to our channel, like I just said. I'm just gonna repeat myself. Where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. <laughs> In this video, we're gonna be going through products that are our empties for this year. So this is the products that we loved, but not only do we love them, but we use them. Now I will say as a dermatologist though, I'm recommending products all the time that are not for me, right? So I don't have dark spots. I don't have acne, right? So even though I don't use a lot of those products, they're still great products, but we're just gonna talk about the ones that we're actually using on a daily basis and what we're actually getting a ton of use out of. That's such an important caveat because people see people using products like, oh, it's so good. I mean, we're dermatologists. We have access to prescription and over-the-counter ingredients and I mean, honestly, we get shipped a lot of stuff. Like we have the capacity to probably try almost anything out there at all times. So just because we use it doesn't mean that you should. These are really, really good products, but it doesn't mean that they're good for you. All right, so our skincare empties, here we go. Here we go. Kicking it off, let's start by category. Dr. Maxfield's gonna give an empty from him. I'm gonna give an empty from me. We may have to weigh in on what our spouses are doing as well because the bathrooms are interchangeable. <laughs> so like <laughs> the empties coincide, right? So let's start, let's start off with cleansers. I'll start off with the La Roche-Posay Tolerian Purifying Foam Cleanser. And the reason why it's an empty is not just because I use it on my face, but also because I use it as a body wash. Do you still do that? Still do it. It's crazy. <laughs> I, every time I see an all in one cleanser, I'm like, absolutely not. Like this is not your shampoo, body wash, face cleanser. But when it's so good, it's, you could use it all over. Do you need a special body wash for your feet? I don't think so. It's just good. It's just it good. Is. It's gentle. It's lather just... is excellent. If you love a rich lather, rich. So that's one, actually one of, if he hadn't said it, I was gonna say it. It's big. Like that's the thing with La Roche-Posay, with their body care in particular, you're gonna get a large volume. It's a face wash. With their washes too, big volume, good amount for your money. So no surprise, that's an empty. For me, I'll go with, that was my empty. So I'm about to go like into my wife's skincare routine here. For her, actually the Pro's Custom Skincare Facial Cleanser, I know it's like, doesn't not meaningful to you, but she actually gets very annoyed when she's out. She requests from me, can we please get refills on this? I'm just throwing it out there, that's real. The other thing she uses all the time is the CeraVe Face Wash. What is it, just a creamy wash? CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. We yeah. did it. Numerous empties on that. It is very gentle. I'm not, the biggest thing, I like a lather. There's no lather almost whatsoever with yeah, it. I personally don't like it, but a lot of my patients benefit from it. That's where the dichotomy mm -hmm. comes in. Sensitive skin, dry skin at baseline, you might love it. It does not strip your skin. It leaves it hydrated. Again, for me, I have oilier skin, so I want the foaming face washes. Now, I want the niacinamides, um, but this is a great option, an empty upon empty that we create. Throwing in my wife's here, and we won't do this for every category, I promise. <laughs> the CeraVe 4% benzyl peroxide cleanser, because my wife's a little bit more acne prone than I am. She uses that every night and has had multiple refills of that. So let's we'll try to limit it for the next categories going forward. Let's talk about moisturizers, which is by far my favorite part of skincare. Mine is going to be still the Roche-Posay, now named Triple Moisturizing Cream. I use it all the time. It's thick and actually, wait a minute, has it been dethroned? I just realized, you know what? I haven't, it, it's great, don't get me wrong, it's still great. I still have empties of it, but this, the Eucerin, this is not sexy. For the body. For the body, it's, so this is body, I guess body. I didn't even think about splitting it. Eucerin really has, done an amazing job, I think, with their skincare this year and their moisturizers in particular. Like this is, this is pretty much empty. I'm gonna get what I can out of it. This is their advanced repair. They also have a good one, their intensive repair with lactic acid. It doesn't leave you greasy, but it really does intensely hydrate like the ads say. Super underrated brand in general. So they have tons of great products. So I also love this one for really, really dry skin. Now my facial moisturizer uh, would be the Skin Fix Gel Moisturizer this year. So I'm a triple lipid guy normally. Now when it gets a little bit colder, I'm gonna be going into their dark blue one, the one that's a little bit heavier but probably most reused this year, or I know most reused this year because I repurchased it the most often, is actually the Skin Fix Gel Moisturizer. Now, it just is a little bit less heavy, um, but still the same, like their textures are incredible in their moisturizers, just absolutely phenomenal. And also, yeah, it, you know, I've been kind of having a little bit less thicker creams lately. Mm, mm. I love it. I don't think I have a face moisturizer empty. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm generally not a moisturizer at night kind of person. It's just my skin type, deal with it. And there are so many good face moisturizers. Like I am obsessed 
with many of them and I have a lot of them. So I may not have gone through one entirely this whole year. Next up category, which is a little bit of an oddball category, but when before we shot this video, we were talking about products that we're actually out of. And both universally was makeup removing bombs believe it or not. And neither of us wear makeup. Do you wear makeup? No, I don't. Okay. Well, neither of us wear makeups, but we use these makeup removing bombs frequently. I also share one with my wife. So we both collectively go through these together. And it's sort of interesting <laughs> which product it is, but it's the pharmacy makeup removing balm. Now we're gonna do a whole deep dive on cleansing bombs in general yes. and, and cleansing oils and which ones are more effective. That's long overdue video. That being said, this product frequently repurchased. We have a Sephora right where we live and we literally have to walk across the street all the time to go get it because we run out of it. It comes with a little scooper, it's green, it's fragranced, but I find it to be one of the most effective makeup removers available on the market after trying hundreds. I think I launched out first like, oh yeah, we have to talk about this one. This one is, I've used so much of it. And he's like, yeah, me too. And I said, I'm shocked. It is fragranced. And if you've ever smelled a bag of green small marshmallows, oh, I love the smell of this. Like experientially, this is my favorite part. of I might say any, it's like really high up there. So I would argue, and I'm gonna take this argument now deep because I just thought of it right now. If you were gonna have fragrance in any part of your skincare routine, cleansing balm would be the place to have it because you almost invariably follow it with another cleanser. Almost invariably. So not only is it a cleanser that you're washing off? Because in most cleansers, even if you're washing it off, you're still gonna leave a little bit of residue behind. But with cleansing bombs specifically, you usually follow it with a water-based cleanser right afterwards, at least I do. And so literally the fragrance is only on my skin during the circular motion of the cleansing bomb to remove my sunscreen. Yeah, and that's it. So I guess that's a testament to how often we wear sunscreen is that we both go through cleansing bombs a ton. By the way, we don't get enough of these. Like out of all the skincare we have, please send us more. always out of cleansing bulbs. So please send us more pharmacy. You never listen to me, but please send us more. <laughs> so next up on the realm of cleansers, which is apparently a huge category, we have body cleansers. <laughs> we didn't mean to do it this way because I just said I use the body and the face. But regardless, now we're in body cleansers. Mine is actually embarrassing and I'm a little bit ashamed. Um, I blame my wife 100%. My wife loves Bath and Body Works. We have candles, we got all, all, the, all the crap. Shame, shame, shame. It's a dermatologist nightmare. If you have sensitive skin, you should never even approach the store. You should never <laughs> even look at the store. But I got in the habit of going in and smelling stuff. Like, it, it's just fun. Like, okay, I'm gonna smell this. And their ocean scent body wash. It's insane. I love it. So I repurchase it. I love the ocean. I'm addicted to the ocean. And it, it, it's like a lifelong for me. I've probably gone through more bottles of that than like tretinoin in the course of my life. I'm not gonna lie. In Dr. Maxfield's bathroom or in his shower that I'm using currently because I'm staying at his place, he has a Bath the Body Works cleanser, body cleanser that is near empty. It's both that, okay. Near empty. Not mine. That's bourbon. And that is my young son's. I took him, I thought he was gonna buy some like candy flavored thing. <laughs> he picked out bourbon and he's like, this is the one I want, dad. I was like, no, you're not getting that. It's, we're gonna smell the rest of the store. <laughs> and then he came back in bourbon, that's his. Well, it's mostly done there. So ultimately, yes. Yeah. So body cleansers for me actually, which I don't know what it is about a nice body cleanser that breaks all the rules. I don't know what to say. It's actually the Tatcha like body scrub. Not only is it fragranced, but it has a physical exfoliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually out twice in the last two months of this product. Tatcha the Deep Cleanse, which I guess is actually a facial exfoliant, but I only use it on the body. Rest in peace, me. But I don't know, I like it a lot. You have to try this one, it's phenomenal. And that's an empty times two for the body. So we're both failing in this category. Though, if you have sensitive skin, La Roche-Posay purifying foaming cleanser that you use on the face, you could use it on the body, like I said earlier. Okay, there it is. Don't cleanse like a dermatologist. All right, next up, let's talk about frequently repurchased, emptied, shampoos. So this is kind of interesting because what we're realizing here is that a lot of our serums and our treatments, we don't tend to run out of those as much as of our cleansers and our moisturizers. And shampoos, unlike everything else, I use a ton of it. So the Neutrogena, the 3% salicylic acid dandruff shampoo, uh, it's a line that came out recently and they may or may not discontinue it. I'm, I'm unsure of the path forward, but uh, I reuse it frequently because I, I've had this issue with like residue in my hair. So everywhere I go, like I can't like remove my hair product and we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> and, but 3% salicylic acid, and I've said this in the past, is actually an incredible 
clarifying shampoo. So not only is it really good for cleaning the hair and removing dandruff, but it's incredibly effective. I find it better than any clarifying shampoo that's available on the market by far. I think it's actually a very valuable statement. I think people underappreciate salicylic acid and hair care and scalp care. I mean, really both hair care and scalp care. Um, so we'll talk more at length about that. For me, the shampoo I run out of most, and I actually do rotate shampoos very, very frequently, both prescription and non-prescription, it's probably the Nizerol shampoo. I think I've been using that this year. It used to be head and shoulders this year. It's like the year of Nizerol. Yeah, I, Nizerol was my most frequently repurchased product in 2021. I think I repurchased it like 40 times or something like that, which is insane, right? Because they come in small bottles. I used a lot of it. It's been leaving me a little bit more residue-y lately, um, but it could just be a water quality issue. I'm not sure what's going on. Next up, let's talk about our frequently repurchased serums. Like I said earlier, serums, we don't run out of them too much because one, you only use a small amount. Two, we tend to be pretty inconsistent when trying actives in general. Um, but the product that I actually ran out of this year was something called Arazlo. It's a prescription Tazeratine product, um, which is a type of retinoid that's pretty strong. You only can get it by prescription, so you have to go see your dermatologist to get it, but prescription tazeratine and tretinoin, of course, I cycle between the two of them, so I run out of tretinoin and tazeratine pretty frequently. I'll show you what I've run out of for actives. There's a reason. I have five of this one product. This is the May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum. So I keep my empty bottles just in case I need them for a video, but uh, <laughs> so this is like that vivid green. So dark spots are my main skin issue, um, along with crinkles that I'm developing. I think I'm just gonna call them crinkles. Crinkles for the rest of my life. But anyway. This really sounds this more fades, lovable. It is, it's very lovable. Huggable, huggable crinkles. So it's like vivid, vivid green. Um, texturally, I think it's great. It's one of those, I got it in my hair. I think it's just one of those dark spot serums that uh, covers multiple different ingredients. And so the way I recommend using these to my patients is, this is how I propose it to them, this is how I propose it to myself. You will take your hydroquinone, which is your birch down bleaching agent. Use it for three months out of the year, take a break. You use your tretinoin. That is your standard staple foundational ingredient you continue nightly, ideally, for the year. And then you find a robust over-the-counter dark spot serum, dark spot product. You can get a cream, you can get a serum if that's your texture. And this is where over-the-counter shines. You get, you get tons of ingredients in one product and it keeps your skincare simple. So that's why I love this. The only questionable ingredient in this is the witch hazel. I have a suspicion it's there for a purpose. I, I feel like maybe it helps with the absorption or skin penetration enhancer or something like that, but. Next up, sunscreens. Now, we should have some empties with sunscreen. We do try a lot of sunscreen, so that could be challenging. And I actually find it kind of difficult to run out of sunscreens in general. I say my wife's most frequently reused sunscreen by far is still the super good glow screen mm. sunscreen. Mm -hmm. She buys that all the time. And then for me, I ran out of the La Roche-Posay UV Immune 400 product, which is a product mm. that's only available in Europe. I hate that. <laughs> that makes me so mad. I've asked some of these brands that also are in Europe. I'm like, please send me your European sunscreens. Like, I, I want to try them. I want the filters. And they just say no. They can't. I don't know if, like, the government arrests them upon delivery or what. But, like, I'm very upset about the filter situation in the U.S. still. I'm probably going to die before this resolves. But, uh, anyway, I wish I could try that, that sunscreen. Interestingly, too, I'm, like, obsessive about sunscreen when I'm outside because I live life outside. Um, indoors, hit or miss. Like, very deliberately, it's hit or miss. I'm just trying to think. So I keep sunscreens in, like, a few different places because it's, like, a grab and go. I have them all over the place. I'm like, okay, which ones have I used the most? Uh, Elta MD UV Restore. I know I've gone through some empties of that. It's nothing exciting, but it is the truth. Uh, I've definitely gone through some La Roche-Posay sunscreen. You know what one I've gone through? That What's that tinted one in the rectangle container? You shake it. Anthelios, mineral tinted. Mineral tinted. I've gone through yeah. a, quite a few of those. There's also the non-tinted liquid version of that. I've also gone through a few of those. It's a good one. The, yeah, that one's really good. It blends really easily. Those are the ones I've created empties. Sorry, like it it's really hard for me to think because really you'll find like a new sunscreen in the side of my car door every week. You'll know which car is mine because there's sunscreen handprints like all over the door handle, all over the car. It's really bad. Last category is a miscellaneous. Now, this has nothing to do with skincare, but maybe it does. It has to do with physical appearance to some extent. So relevant. By far, most repurchased product ever 
on Amazon stands to this day as the Hans de Fuco claymation, which is a matte finish, palm made almost, but it's not really a palm made because it's like matte finish. So it's my hair product. <laughs> to summarize, my hair product, I've been using this for five years at least. I've tried hundreds of other products out there. I cannot find one that cooperates with my hair. My hair is naturally very, very straight. To keep my hair up, this is the only product that's worked for me. I've probably bought this a thousand times. I don't know. And this is why he was describing that he can't get residue out of his hair. <laughs> so like, look, he, he was gracious enough, and I think before, to let me try that on a day I forgot my hair, my own hair product. I get mine from my barber and he makes it, it's like 20 bucks. This is like glue. This is like the Peter Thomas Roth eye cream times 10 <laughs> in your hair. This is why it can't be washed out. So I hate it, I, 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 I hate it. Now, for my most repurchased item of 2023 miscellaneous, it is this, Yasso. You didn't think healthy ice cream existed. You didn't think healthy ice cream could taste good. You had tried Halo Top and you were turned off forever. These are insane. They are creamy. I think they're yogurt based. The flavor is extraordinary. So I'm like been pretty good with my diet this year. Like this is my old man progression. Yeah, his, he's working out, we're doing good. But the, this is like my sweet snack. I, and I even think it's acceptable during the week sometimes for me, which is when I'm very strict on myself. 100 calories is not bad. No, 100 calories, one gram of total fat, zero grams saturated fat, carbs are 18. So if you're like really strict with your carbs, less than 30 is like a very strict way to do it. Um, there are sugars in this, but like it can fit into even a ketogenic diet if you're strict the rest of the day. Yeah, so come find me. Let's do I this. I love food, okay? A lot of you don't know this about me. This is kind of like a summary fun video of the year. So if you don't know this about me, I'm a massive foodie and there's nothing that brings me more joy in life than food. I don't think I can ever die it, I decided. I just don't think I could do it. Like I, I literally think about food all day. I genuinely do. I had this like incredible Indian, I'm, I'm thinking about food right now. I almost missed my flight because I was trying to get cart food in, in New York City when I was there. Like I almost did, I was like, should I skip the flight? I love food. So if anyone wants to have a separate foodie conversation, we could talk about that at other times, but he knows because every time we would travel, I'd be like, oh, we're going to this place. I found this place. But anyway, let us know below what your favorite products of the, the year have been. What are you running out of? What have your empties been? What are you actually using on a consistent basis? Not in theory, <laughs> what you should be using, but what are you actually using? I'm very curious about this. And I'm also curious about what category it falls in. Is it a cleanser? Is it a moisturizer? Super interesting to me to find out. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Yep, we appreciate you being on this journey of life with us. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>